Previously on Five Points of Articulation. And by previously, I mean over a year ago. I'm sure that all of the canceled pre-orders and aggravation will be absolutely worth it once I peek inside this box. Ah! Yeah, you could say I'm a bit excited for this one. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I review action figures and then articulate five points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and if you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube rigmarole. Today, we're taking a look at the all-new Hasbro Indiana Jones as he appeared in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Starting with the packaging, and I can't believe I'm going to say this, I kind of love this box. Obviously, I don't love that it's windowless, but I do really like all the individual details. First of all, it's a matte finish with the logo being spot varnished. Indy himself is also spot varnished, so he really pops. Some nice Drew Strews and style artwork back here, which wraps around to the side. Awesome portrait of our good Dr. Jones, as well as some classic moments from the film. On the side, we see that instead of a build a figure, it's a build an artifact. In this case, the Ark of the Covenant. And wouldn't you know it, it shows us the figures in the wave. Then again, looking at that questionable Marion likeness, I can see why they might not want to. There's also an invitation to travel by map. This brings us to the back of the box where we see the exact same picture of Indy, but also a static shot showing all the accessories he comes with, and also the figure's height. Because of the lack of window, I feel a lot like Indiana Jones. Hoping that the treasure I seek is inside the chest. Quick side note before I move on, they even have instructions on how to assemble the Ark inside the box. Honestly, that's very much appreciated. If that wasn't enough, they even printed maps on the little baggies. I've never done this before, but for going above and beyond for packaging, I'm giving Indiana Jones two whole points. Moving on to presentation, and just like the box says, Indy stands at 6.3 inches. First impressions, and I am very impressed with the amount of sculpted and painted detail in his costume. The hat's efficiently rumpled and has some nice shadows and highlights. There's more highlights on the jacket to bring out that leather look. Flipping around, they even did some on the back. Pulling apart the jacket, he might look a bit skinny, but that's in service to the layering. Good leather texture on the holster. Also good to see that they painted the belt buckles. Here we have the strap for his whip, which I'll be talking about during playability. Little heavy-handed here. And speaking of hands, here's that one, and that one. Similar to the hat and the pants are also sufficiently rumpled. Very nicely done wrinkles at the bottom. And again, a bit of extra paint detail. We also see that on the shoes. Hard to imagine he was able to do a lot of adventuring in these, but the biggest question mark is what about the likeness of the man under the hat? Straight on, and I feel like there may be a few too many lines and wrinkles, especially when you look at the box art. And honestly, the more I turn his head, the more I see it. Especially the profile. For a presentation, I'm giving Indiana Jones one whole point. Moving on to posability, and there's some choices here that are going to rub some collectors the wrong way. From the top, and his head's in a dumbbell joint. I'm sure you'll be pretty happy to know it comes off pretty easily. Thanks to the forward and back shifting of that dumbbell, he can look up this much, which is a lot more than I was expecting, and he can look this far down. That dumbbell bell also gives him tilt and all the way around. Moving down in his swivel hinge shoulders can raise 90 degrees. He also gets forward and back with a butterfly joint. That said, some will be disappointed to discover that he has neither a bicep swivel nor a double joint elbow. Instead, he has single jointed swivel elbows that admittedly do get a pretty deep bend. And that swivel does meet pretty much in the middle. One big surprise is that his hands are on ball joints. As such, they can spin with no trouble and kind of float throughout. On the one hand, it allows those hands hands to hinge either sideways or up and down. On the other hand, no matter which direction you hinge, you can't hinge that deeply. Moving to the middle, and he has no diaphragm joint or ab crunch. Instead, all of his torso articulation is accomplished through a ball jointed waist. Using just that joint, he can arch back this far and hunch forward this far. He also gets an impressive amount of tilt and twist. Below the belts and side bags in Indiana Jones has ball jointed hips. They can kick forward 90 degrees, which given the bagginess of the pants really surprised me, and they can split this wide. Moving down, he has thigh cut, and for the other choice that might rub people the wrong way, only single jointed swivel knees. Moving all the way down and peeking under the pant leg, and there actually is a swivel in there, so you do actually have a replacement for boot cut. And of course, he also can hinge and pivot. Compared to something like a Marvel Legend, he might be a bit limited, but all that's in service to the realism of his sculpt. Although some of you may disagree for posability, I'm giving Indy one whole point. Moving on to playability, and just like with the figure, the baggie's been printed. Unfortunately, I tore mine, and I actually care. What is the deal? 
First things first, he comes with a revolver. Perfect for a scimitar fight. It looks good, but it's also paper thin. It fits nicely in his trigger hand, or in his holster. And he also comes with a golden idol from the beginning of the film, which he can hold in his open hand. You might recognize it better like this. Additionally, Indiana has a pair of fists, as well as a pair of accessory holding hands. This brings me to his two most important accessories, his whips. He's got an unfolded one. It's pretty soft plastic, so you can move that around. But he also comes with a coiled up version. Recall during presentation where I pointed out this strap on his belt. Unfortunately, no matter what I do, I cannot get mine to fasten shut. Even without the whip. Unlike the gun holster, there isn't any kind of cap or anything, so it just slides in and out. I don't know if it's a design flaw or if mine's just defective, but either way, it is kind of a bummer. Another thing that's kind of a bummer is the fact that the hat's not removable, but remember just how easily these heads pop on and off. If you get one of the hatless options, it should be no trouble swapping them out. While we're here, I should probably take a moment to discuss the side bag. It's well sculpted, and I'm very pleasantly surprised to see that they went in and painted the gold buttons. Lastly, he has the top pieces of the Ark of the Covenant. As jam-packed as this indie is, playability is more than just accessories. It's also about how well your figure plays with others. Starting with the most obvious comparison, and here he is with Han Solo. This is the retro card 40th anniversary version long before the face printing technology. That said, for one other Star Wars comparison that seems appropriate, and here he is with the all new retro card Boba Fett. Moving over to a different Hasbro line, and here we have Marvel Legends. This is the Puff Adder Wave Ultimate Cap, but for a couple of MCU comparisons, and here we have Endgame Captain America. They scale a lot better than I expected. Here's the Multiverse of Madness Doctor Strange, and for a little Kingdom of the Crystal Skull reunion, here he is with Kate Blanchett as she appeared in Thor Ragnarok. For another Crystal Skull reunion, and here he is with a fridge. But for one more Crystal Skull reunion, and here we have Dan Aykroyd. Get it? because of his crystal head vodka. For just a couple of other Hasbro comparisons, and here we have Storm Shadow from G.I. Joe Classified, and the Lightning Collection Power Rangers SPD Green Ranger. If you want to know where he came from, check out my latest P.O. Box video. Moving over to Mattel, and here we have the Jurassic Park Amber Collection Dr. Ian Malcolm, Hollywood Elite John Cena, and a very jaundiced looking He-Man. For a very different 6-inch scale fedora wearing 80s icon, and here we have Freddy Krueger. This one comes from the Mezco 112 Collective. Some of you might be surprised to see I have a Mezco 112 figure. Hopefully you'll be pleasantly surprised by my upcoming video on this one. For a slightly larger Freddy, and here we have the NECA Ultimate Nightmare on Elm Street 3 version. And as long as we're talking about NECA, we might as well bring out another one of my childhood favorites, Leonardo from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. For a 6 inch scale import figure, and here we have Hush from Batman. This brings me to my patent pending Rebirth Batman scale. Here we have Icons, Mattel DC Comics Multiverse, and McFarlane DC Multiverse. That's that said, for an old school McFarlane figure, and here we have Medusa. Why did it have to be snakes? Going back to Batman for a minute though, and the one I really want to see him with is this NECA one. I gotta tell you, between a new Michael Keaton Batman movie, a new Ghostbusters movie, a new Little Mermaid movie, and a new Indiana Jones movie, it really feels like 1989 all over again. Time of course is relative, so for a relative scale comparison, here's Indiana Jones with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man, and as always, here he is with Stealth Iron Man. Disappointed as I may be with the inability to fasten the whip, this guy's accessories really blow me away. A lot of thought and care has been put into this, and it shows. If you get no other figure from this line, this one is all you need. For playability, Dr. Jones gets one whole point. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. Indiana Jones will set you back $24.99. Considering the sculpted and painted detail, as well as the number of accessories, compared to other Hasbro figures, that's kind of a bargain. Let's be honest, if this was a Star Wars figure, Hasbro would be selling it as a deluxe. For price, I'm giving Raiders of the Lost Ark one whole point, which means that on a five point scale, Indiana Jones is a six. Agree? Disagree? Sound off in the comments and let me know how excited you are for this new line. If you like this video, check out one of these. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.